The Red Wing Iron Rangers are not only one of the most popular American made boots, but one of the very first boots I ever cut apart. And that was when we had like 100,000 subscribers, didn't really know what I was doing, and so we thought it was time to revisit the Iron Ranger to really answer three questions. Has Red Wing started cutting corners like we kind of saw with this little experimental boot they did with the wedge sole, the Iron Ranger wedge, whatever they called it. The second thing is, how does it compare to the other made in the United States of America boots for the Matusa series? And three, are they worth the Iron Ranger hype? So to do that, we're gonna cut them in half, run it through our test to really see if the Iron Ranger is everything it's cracked up to be. And thanks to Jim Green for sponsoring this video, they're coming out with two new boots. One of them is really interesting because of the leather they use. So because Jim Green's from South Africa and they are so conservation focused, anytime they need to kill a buffalo, whether it's from disease or population control, they use all the, the byproducts of that animal. They, they donate the meat so it can get eaten, the bones even get donated, but the hides used to just not be used. But Jim Green has gone out of their way to collect those hides and tan them and turn them into Jim Green boots. And they purchase those hides from the reserve, which that money goes back into the conservation effort instead of just a hide in the field being rotten and animals going and eating it. And also, if you didn't know, Jim Green has a program where they end up donating tons of these African Ranger boots to African Rangers. So it's about as full circle of a process as you can get. And they're only making 1,600 pairs because of the limited amount of hides that they got. And keep in mind, like this is not like, a cow, this is a buffalo from Africa, and so each hide's gonna have different variations and scars and flaws and wrinkles, which is part of the beauty in my opinion. And they're also coming out with the Baobab boot, which is made to celebrate the 30 years of Jim Green, and they've combined the single piece vamp of the Razorback, the facing of the African Ranger, and put it on a brand new sole to make a really unique Jim Green boot. And more importantly, if you have a little skinny feet like me and the really wide toe box of Jim Green is a little too wide, they just came out that narrow last that that, that boot's gonna be built on. And if you didn't know, we've cut apart several pairs of Jim Greens on the channel, so we'll put links to these boots and the cut in half reviews. Everything's in the in the description, so check them out below. And thanks again to Jim Green for sponsoring this video. So now let's go over the history of the Iron Ranger. So Red Wing, they're based in Minnesota, and they've been man manufacturing shoes since 1905. And they specialize in more of like the workwear and farming and mining and hunting, like really focused on at the time. The, the reason most people wore boots was for work. And then in 1917, Red Wing debuted the predecessor to the Iron Ranger, the Pershing boot. And the Pershing boot, Pershing, I think is how it said, the Pershing boot was made for soldiers in World War I to combat the issues of trench foot and using the military developed months and last style with the more anatomical shape, with the toe bump, to leave more room for more types of feet. And then in the 1930s, the remote Mesabi Mountain Range in Northern Minnesota experienced a mining boom, boom specifically in iron and the people in that area that were mining iron slowly became known as Iron Rangers due to their jobs working the Masabi Iron Range. So Iron Rangers, Masabi Mountain Range, Iron Rangers. And allegedly that's where the toe cap on the Iron Rangers came from because they needed a little more wear resistance, especially for doing mining work. They, so they added the toe cap onto the Iron Ranger, solidifying it as a really famous silhouette. And that's allegedly the history of the Iron Ranger and where it, where it got its name. And obviously from the 30s onward, it had some resurgence in popularity and ups and downs. And like the real resurgence of the heritage workwear thing that's been happening over the last 15 years. So now let's start going through the material, starting with the leather first. So this is Red Wing's new slate mule skinner leather. I have their regular mule skinner. It's kind of a tan color and it's a really pretty leather because it ages nicely. It's a rough out leather so you can see on the inside that smooth texture of leather that you usually see on the outside of boots is flipped to the inside because this more suede texture is a more wear resistant portion of the leather cross section so in work boots a lot of times they'll reverse the leather to put that on the outside and if we put the macro lens on the cross section you can see there's plenty of grain still in there and then we also burned the leather just to show you how much more burn resistant suede texture is compared to the grain so we just did a side by side to show you how much more uh, fragile the grain is to flame compared to the suede texture. And the overall thickness of this leather is 2.2 millimeters thick, so right in that red wing range. It usually varies from 2 to 2.5. And if you look at the very top texture of the leather, you can see 
more of what I meant by those little teeny fibers and how that that's, can be potentially more wear resistant because you actually have to, you're moving fibers around and burning individual fibers and uh, abrading individual fibers rather than the entire flat plane of the grain. And so we also wanted to do the, the rattlesnake test on this to see how many pounds it took to pierce through the upper and it took 62 pounds. So not bad for just a single layer of leather and overall I really do like this leather. It's, it's a high quality leather. I would consider it an A grade leather. It has plenty of grain. It has a very natural, there's no plastic in it. There's, it's a very natural leather and I believe it's tanned by SB Foot, who is owned by Red Wing. And one thing that's really unique about Red Wing is they're vertically integrated. So they have control over the entire manufacturing process as much as possible. And I think that's part of why these boots continue to be a very good boot for the price. So when it comes to the leather, is Red Wing cutting corners? Or have they cut corners since the last uh, Iron Ranger we did? No, they have not. I think it's still, the leather still to the same standard that Red Wing has made their name off of. Next, if we start looking at the inside of the boot, you can see that just like the other Iron Rangers, it's unlined in the shaft of the boot on the quarters, and then it is lined on the vamp. And it's, it's lined with the exact same lining. I think it's a cotton trill lining. And so it's, it's not the most wear resistant fabric. And a lot of people complain about after some wear, they start wearing through this fabric, which is already solved in the, their Mokto boots because they use a nice like Nubuck style leather in their Mokto. So I'm not sure why they continue to use that cotton drill because it just seems like it's an inferior lining compared to the even their, their own Moktos. And then you can also see that there's that same little heel pad sock liner in there that just helps protect the nails that could potentially just give you a little bit of a high pressure spot there. They also still have that same really thick veg tan leather insole. We don't know for sure how thick it is. This might be a little area that Red Wing might be starting to cut some corners on if they are. So we'll see how thick that insole actually is. And then the other internal components are like the tongue is still gusted in the same spot. They still don't have a, a dedicated internal counter cover, but the counter is still covered by a thick slab of leather. It's the, it's basically just the quarters. The only potential wear spot I could see being an issue there is the stitching is exposed. So over time your heel could wear through those stitches, but even the Pacific Northwest brands do that same style of stitch and they don't seem to have a lot of problems. So for the internal components, has Red Wing cut any corners? Doesn't look like it. Now if we start looking at the sole construction, so you can see that it's a real leather welt that wraps around 270 degrees. So this is a 270 degree Goodyear welted boot and the nails or the heel is nailed on like a classically made 270 degree Goodyear welted boot. You can see the nails through here and the rand itself is a leather board rand. And on the Iron Rangers, there's not really a midsole. You know, it, it does have the cork filling that a lot of people would consider the midsole, but as for a dedicated layer underneath the insole between the outsole, there's no midsole layer on the Iron Rangers. And that's something I've always wondered why they don't do like a slip sole layer or do like a even just a dedicated veg tan layer of the midsole, especially for 350 bucks. And then if we look at the outsole, so this is the, their Vibram mini lug. And this is a pretty popular also. I think this is one, this is a specifically made for Red Wing. It's a really popular also because you get that flat look, you get the little lugs in there that help you get a little bit of grip and they're very wear resistant because it's a pretty hard rubber. It comes in at a 75 Shore A, which is pretty pretty hard. It's right up there with like the rest of the Vibram outsoles. And we also did a puncture test and it took 207 pounds to pierce all the way from the outsole to the inside of the boot. And so with the sole construction, has Red Wing cut any corners? It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's built the exact same way that they built this boot that we reviewed two years ago. And as for the other final touches, any little things that we missed or haven't talked about, Everything seems to be pretty much the same. It still is a Puritan stitch that's coated in wax to give it a little more water resistance. The rand is still a leatherboard rand and the stitching looks pretty much the same, like the same stitch density, the eyelets are the same. So from the outside, it doesn't look like Red Wings cut any corners, but it's hard to really see where people are cutting corners until you cut it in half because most of the time they're cutting corners on the inside where nobody's gonna catch them unless you cut them in half. So now let's chop them in half. All right, we got them chopped in half and there's definitely a still shank in here because those are such a pain to cut through. So let's see what's inside. All 
All right, now that they're cut in half, has Red Wing cut any corners on the inside of this boot? Because we have the boot that we cut apart two years ago to compare this boot that was released this year. So we know this is the most recent offering from Red Wing. So component by component, both have that really thick leather insole, both have the cork filling, both have the metal shank, both have the exact same outsoles, both have the leather welt, both have synthetic rands, both have the little patch of leather at the heel, both have that same cotton trill lining, both have a very true double layer toe cap, which is pretty rare. The heels are both nailed on, the counters are both leather board, so every little component of the shoe is or boot is exactly the same. So as Red Wing cut any corners on their recent versions of the Iron Rangers, it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's the, the exact same standard that they built the Red Wing name off of. So now to rank it on the Matusa board. So this is a tough one because we have a Red Wing up there. We got a, a pair of thir Thursdays up there that are made in the United States. So where does this one rank? Well, to me, looking at strictly the components, because that's what we're doing, it's not about value. And when we do the final, the big finale where we rank all these, we're gonna have you guys vote on how you'd rank them for value to just to add some more context to this because we're doing it strictly off of quality materials and how it's built. So where does this one lie? I would say this is pretty clearly between Thursday and the Red Wing mock toe. I think there could be an argument made for all three of those to be swapped around whichever way, depending on how you use your boots, what you value, but strictly from materials, I think it's right between Thursday and, and the mock toe of Red Wings. Now to the final question, are they worth the hype? Because now we know how they rank on the Matusa, we know they're, they're $50 more than their own mock toes. Are they worth the hype? Do they live up to that 90 years of, of heritage and workwear brand lineage? I think, I think they are. At the end of the day, Red Wing, after we've cut all these boots apart and as we have more and more to compare them to it, I think honestly Red Wing continues to impress me. You know, my, my opinion kind of fluctuates from time to time with them, especially when this boot came out with all the synthetic materials on the inside. But I think they are worth the hype. They might be a little bit overpriced, especially if you compare it to their own boot, but they're the classic toe cap boot that's an American heritage made boot. They're iconic across the world and they're made of good materials and they last a really long time and everything on the inside points to them being worth the, uh, around that same price, especially for made in the United States. So final answer, are they worth the, worth the hype? I would say yes. You know, they're, they're not cheap, but I think the price is, is mostly justifiable. So let me know what you guys think and what your experience has been with the Iron Rangers, because that's a really good thing about the comment section. For some reason, uh, our comments are super positive and super informative and a great resource for people. So drop your own opinions on why these are $50 less and your experiences in Iron Rangers in the comments. We got a couple more mock toes left and we, I think we got one or two Matusas left and we're gonna do a big grand finale where we rank them all, give your guys' opinions. So be on the lookout for that and thank you guys for everything you do. See ya.